2003, one of the most infamous Ballon d'Or ceremonies of all time occurred. Sure, there have been many controversial Ballon d'Ors throughout the years, but never has one throughout all this time been overwhelmingly considered to be consensus robbery. Because in 2003, Thierry Henry scored a total of 32 goals and had 28 assists in 55 matches. An incredible 1.1 goal contributions per game. And since then, nobody has ever had 20 plus goals and assists in a single Premier League season. And not to mention towards the end of the year when the Ballon d'Or would be held in December 22, Henri was absolutely on fire for the next 2003-2004 season, where up until the ceremony, he was scoring game after game and we would know would eventually carry out throughout the end of the season, would not lose a single match. But there was another player who only scored 14 goals and had 17 assists in 46 matches, a .70 goal contributions per game with 10 less matches played, and his name was Pavel Nedved. And much to the surprise to many worldwide, the golden ball was handed over to no other than the Juventus midfielder. And the crazy part is that Nedved would never make it to the top three voting for the award ever again. In fact, before that point, he had never really had any individual awards in any of the top five leagues in Europe. But despite the overwhelming difference in individual performance and production, to many of the journalists who were voting for the award, in their eyes, Nedved was the one who deserved it kind of reminds you of another Ballon d'Or year with a very similar narrative and a very similar difference in stats. We look at the Ballon d'Or as an award of individual performance. At least that's what it's supposed to be, right? But when I ask ChatGPT what the standards of the Ballon d'Or are, hilariously enough, individual performance was the absolute last category to be considered. Yeah, so much for individual award. But what's very telling is when you ask an artificial intelligence, who's supposed to be as objective and neutral as possible, who truly deserved the Ballon d'Or in 2003, and its answer was no other than Bruh. Thierry Henry. But it might not be as simple as that. So just exactly how did Pavel Nedved win the award? And how good was he really? We're gonna dive into his career and see exactly what kind of player he really was. This is a story of Pavel Nedved, the man who many believe stole the Ballon d'Or. Today, not that many people really know about Pavel Nedved. Sure, he was a Ballon d'Or winner and a truly brilliant footballer. But in such a legendary era of footballers where the talent pool was truly spread throughout every league, he just never really gets mentioned up there with some of the generation's greatest, like Zidane, Ronaldinho, and Ronaldo. In fact, on YouTube, you'll hardly find any videos of him with a lot of views. But it's truly a shame, because Pavel Nedved, despite the criticism he got from many who felt like Henri deserved the award, was a truly brilliant player. His career started off at a very complicated time in Eastern Europe, originally playing for his hometown club in Czechoslovakia at the age of 18. But because of the political climate at the time, military service was mandatory. So Nedved would serve it in the form of a loan to Dukla Prague, a club that was ran by the Czechoslovakian army. So it wouldn't be until after serving his time with the army club at 22 years old that Nedved would be signed with the most historic club in the country, Sparta Prague. But at the time, Nedved was seen as somewhat of a hotshot, a young and electric player, but very far from world class. In fact, he even got three red cards, his first six matches for Sparta Prague, looking like prime Pepe on steroids, with journalists, pundits, and other managers in the Czech First League doubting his talents and saying he would never become anything special. But for the first few years of his career with Sparta Prague, those critics were actually right. And it wasn't until his last couple of seasons with the club that he would really improve and start to make a name for himself. Nedved would finish his final season in Sparta Prague with a respectable 19 goals and 4 assists in 35 matches. But what really put the spotlight on Nedved was a few weeks later going into the summer, as Nedved would absolutely shine in the 1996 European Championships, where Nedved was an incredibly crucial part in helping his country, who nobody was expecting to perform well at all, make it all the way to the final of the tournament. And there was even a time where Czechoslovakia was down 10 men versus Italy, and Nedved scored a single goal and helped them finish the match 2-1. He was even named the man of the match in the semi-final versus Zidane and France. 
and although they would lose 2-1 to to Germany in the final with his unexpectedly dominant performances. But that's because Nedved was a very unique midfielder. He was basically ambidextrous and can play the ball with both feet, but he actually isn't even naturally ambidextrous. He trained both feet so much he has nearly identical ability with both, and you could basically play him anywhere. From out wide to a more attacking midfield role, Nedved had the ability to perform beautiful passes from either side. And one thing about him was he had an insane work rate and stamina, both offensively and defensively. And when you combine all of that with his elite dribbling, he was a very deadly playmaker who could go for goal by himself and was even comfortable doing so from a distance or beating defenders off the dribble and getting inside the box. Most modern comparison I can think of honestly is Kevin De Bruyne with better dribbling mixed with Conte stamina and defensive presence. But despite Nedved always making a face like he was panicking, he was incredibly composed and always made the most brilliant plays. And I'm sure those of us who played before know the feeling of apologizing to our teammates after making a bad pass or play. But thankfully, today's sponsor can help you avoid this and become a more confident and calm player on the pitch. Be Your Best is football training in virtual reality, and it's made by a team of footballers and technology experts from Norway, helping you to improve your cognitive performance. The main skill that Be Your Best trains is your scanning, but it's also used to improve players' vision, decision-making, and memory, allowing you to train these difficult skills from home anytime you want. Be Your Best has even been used by the German U-17 squad, who just recently were crowned champions of the 2023 U-17 European Championships, with virtual reality being a huge part of their training program. In Be Your Best main training mode called Scenario Training, you'll play through over 800 scenarios created from real-life professional games, like this one featuring Modric. You'll be on the field playing the game from a player's first-person perspective as you complete scenarios and receive feedback for your performance. They've also just released a secondary training mode called Match Play, which aims to replicate the experience of a real-life match. This mode gives you complete control over your movements both on and off the ball, helping you to improve your all-around positional awareness. Be Your Best has been used by amateurs and professional players players all over the world, with Arsenal star Martin Odegaard even having trained with it during his injury, with a recent 9-week study seeing players who trained with it improve their scan rate by 28%, and so you can get 15% off your first month or first year by using my code RAYMAR15 at checkout. Just go to BeYourBest.com to get started, the link is also in the description. Nedved's summer of 1996 saw an interest from what was arguably the most competitive league in the world at the time. Serie A. Nedved's move to Lazio represented a significant step in terms of competition and exposure. Back then, Serie A was known for its brilliance and especially its defensive intensity, far different from the Czechoslovakia league. It demanded Nedved to use a very different style of play to what he was accustomed to, but despite this, his versatility and work ethic shined. He would quickly adapt to the pace in Serie A, and his dribbling, which was already a standout part of his style of play, became even better as Nedved would break through tight defenses, making him a constant threat, allowing him to better create openings for himself and his teammates. But during his time in Lazio, Nedved played a variety of different midfield roles. Whether it was attacking midfielder, central playmaker, or box-to-box -box midfielder, more than scoring goals in Lazio, he was really known as the club's most invaluable playmaker. Though not exactly always giving the direct assist, he was always involved with the team's plays and was very crucial in the team's success. But his biggest achievements in Lazio was securing several UEFA Cups. And although Nedved was seen as one of the best players in the league, he never really scored a crazy amount of goals or provided an insane amount of assists. But regardless, he was incredibly valuable for his club's success. He's kind of like Sergio Busquets in the sense that you don't really notice how important he is and how significant of a role he provides. But without him, you would definitely feel the difference. Although at this point, he was never really a standout world-class superstar, Nedved was truly the master jack of all trades. And throughout his five seasons with Lazio, he would help the club win one Serie A title, two Coppa Italias, two Italian Super Cups, one UEFA Winners' Cup, which back then was the second most prestigious award after the European Cup or modern day Champions League, and lastly, one UEFA Super Cup, scoring 51 goals and providing 29 assists in 208 matches. But surprisingly, he had never up to this point in his career won any individual awards for his time in Italy thus far. Now about to turn 29 years old, most people would look at players at this age and think that their careers would only start to go downhill, especially back then when sports sciences, recovery, and longevity in general wasn't nearly as advanced as it is today. But Nedved was one of those very rare players of that generation that actually improved with age. 
as in 2001, much to the sadness of Lazio fans who truly knew how valuable the unassuming midfielder was, Nedved would be signed by Juventus with one specific job, replace Zinedine Zidane. And as difficult of a task that would be for any other player even back then, Pavel Nedved did better than anyone would have ever expected. In just his first and his importance to the club didn't translate to direct goals or assists. But make no mistake, he was the one controlling the tempo of the attack. Similar to what Xavi does without directly scoring or assisting. But now brings us to the 2002-2003 season, the year that Nedved was truly at his best, as he put on the best display of his playmaking, creativity, and dribbling of his entire career. Though he would only score 14 goals and have 17 assists in 46 matches, he would help Juventus win back-to-back -back Serie A titles, as well as winning the Italian Super Cup to secure the domestic double. But where he really shined most was in the Champions League, especially the absolute dribbling and playmaking masterclass that he would put on against Zinedine Zidane and Real Madrid's Galacticos, leading Juventus all the way to the Champions League final, where they would eventually lose 2-1 against fellow Italian giants AC Milan. Though his stats might not have been anything great and are pretty similar to Kevin De Bruyne's stats in the 2021-22 season, those numbers just didn't do justice to the full essence of Nedved's impact. His ability to change the course of the game was evident in his playmaking, dribbling, and overall influence on the pitch. Then came the infamous Ballon d'Or ceremony of 2003. Many were surprised and some even shocked when Pavel Nedved was awarded the Ballon d'Or, considering just how crazy and truly exceptional of a year Thierry Henry just had. Even articles from back then have Nedved saying, I am very happy. I did not think I would beat Thierry Henry, Paolo Maldini, or Zinedine Zidane. And if I had voted, I would have voted for Thierry Henry and the other players on the podium. And of course, the man is just being humble, but there definitely is truth in what he's saying because he was 100% serious when he said he didn't believe he could win over Thierry Henry. And this controversy surrounding Nedved's Ballon d'Or would last for years and years. Was it truly about individual performance or something more? Because the truth is, despite being an individual award, they're always gonna look in team accolades as well. And the reasoning back then seemed to be that Nedved's impact outweighed the insane statistics of Thierry Henry. I, however, personally don't agree. But there are people who will say that the award was based on racism. And to touch up on that, I don't really think that's the reason as well. After all, there had already been a player of color like George Weah to win the award. The real reason was simply because of two main factors. The first one being that Serie A was seen as a much more competitive league. To many pundits, the Premier League was simply not the best league in the world. So they would go on to downplay Henri's achievements, even though his 20 plus goals and assists in a single Premier League season has never been done again. Not to mention, towards the end of 2023, after the summer international break, Henri had never lost a match with Arsenal. Because as we all know, they would go on to the 2003-2004 season without losing a single match. And towards the end of the year, Henri was going on an absolute goal scoring run. And the second thing that might have influenced the decision was Henri and Arsenal's lack of success in the Champions League, as they were knocked out in the group stages, with Henri not really having any notable performances. Nedved would win the Serie A title and Italian Super Cup in 2003 while Henri would only finish in second place in the Premier League while only winning the FA Cup and Community Shield. When it came to the Champions League, Nedved was the engine of Juventus, putting on masterful performances and standing out amongst everyone. If I were to look at the award as it was meant to be an individual award, I still have to say as amazing as Nedved was, still Henri was the one who really deserved it. He was definitely an invaluable player with an incredible impact, but still there were so many greats that are close to Nedved in almost every top league. They had guys like Dennis Bergkamp, Zidane, Pirlo, Deco, Raul, and a few more elite generations midfielders. But before Messi and Ronaldo, producing the stats that Henri had was incredibly rare. And there have been several generational midfielders that have had much better years than Nedved, but still have never won Ballon d'Or. This is the same logic as to why I firmly believe that Luka Modric did not deserve the 2018 Ballon d'Or. I mean, when you look at Ronaldo's insane year of 49 goals and 13 assists in 53 matches, which was a 1.2 goal contributions per game, while being the oldest to ever score a hat-trick in the World Cup, you cannot convince me that that is not better than Modric who I understand was brilliant for his country, helping bring them to the World Cup final and helping Real Madrid win their third Champions League in a row. But to anyone who thinks Modric single-handedly carried Croatia, have no idea just how good Mandzukic, Perisic, and Rakitic were in that tournament. And despite how important you think Modric was to Real Madrid's third Champions League title win, no way is it more important than Ronaldo's 15 Champions League goals in 13 matches. 
But back to Nedved, not only did he win the Ballon d'Or that year, but he was also awarded as the Serie A Footballer of the Year and UEFA Club's Best Midfielder of the 2002-2003 season. But he would really only continue this form up to one year later, before he really started showing signs of slowing down. As the UEFA Team of the Year placement in 2005 was the last individual accolade of his career. In fact, in his eight seasons with Juventus before retiring, Nedved was close a couple times, but could never again help his club win any more titles since his Ballon d'Or year. So don't get me wrong, Nedved was an incredibly brilliant and class player. Definitely one of the most elite midfielders of his generation, especially in his two-year absolute prime. But I still believe that he robbed the Ballon d'Or from Thierry Henry. I mean, you can see for yourself the quality he had as a player that he would maintain relatively throughout most of his career. But even at his very best and at his prime, there are still quite a handful of footballers that are better but have never won the award. And this sentiment seems to be shared by the majority who in hindsight realize what Henri did was just much more impressive. So that's why as great as he was, Pavel Nedved was the man who stole the Ballon d'Or.